Palestinian dates from us uh, suffer from lots of uh, problems. Uh, first, uh, their lands are being confiscated so that they can be used by Israeli settlers in order to produce dates and to expand their settlements on the expense of Palestinian land. So they are losing their land. Uh, second, uh, they don't have enough water because also the Israelis are confiscating all the water resources from the Palestinians and they're sending them to the Israeli settlements. So now the Palestinian farmers have to buy water for high prices in order to irrigate their trees. Furthermore, uh, they, they have some restrictions also on movement, so they can't move freely all over the Jordan Valley where the dates are produced because uh, the Jordan Valley is 95% uh, of it is under the Israeli military control. So they have some restrictions of movement. Uh, another issue that is also important is that they don't uh, have control on the production input that they need for the agriculture, for the production of dates. For example, pesticides uh, and other input materials that they use, they have to get these products through Israeli traders who monopolize this kind of trade. And sometimes they have to pay more in order to get the production input. Sometimes the, they uproot trees like date trees. They approve them in order to expand the settlements or in order to uh, uh, have like ways, roads that connect settlements to each other. Furthermore, we have some problems in logistics. For example, as a company, when we export not only dates, but dates and other products, but for example, when we export dates, we have to use the Israeli seaport because, you know, Palestine doesn't have any uh, seaports, so we have to send them through the Israeli seaports. And in so many cases, the containers get stuck at the seaport for so many days for alleged security reasons. And this is also another issue that we face uh, as exporters. We also pay high prices for the export, not like the Israeli exporters, they fail us. And, for example, when we uh, fill the container with goods, we can't uh, fill the whole container. We can only use two-thirds of the containers. Two-thirds, uh, which means that we, we lose around 35, 30 to 35% of the space. This means an extra cost for us. Yes, the Israeli farmers are competitors because uh, this product is only produced in two areas, in the Jordan Valley and in California. So there isn't so much demand of this variety of dates. But before we start talking about competition, we have to mention that Israeli dates are produced only inside Israeli settlements, which are under international law are considered illegal and have to be dismantled. So this product, in consequence, is not legal. Uh, so this is first. So the consumers have to know that this product violates basic human rights for the Palestinians, and it is illegal. So, uh, uh, and at the same time, it competes with Palestinian farmers who don't have any support, like the Israeli farmers, who receive so much subsidies from their government and who receive almost free water that is confiscated from the Palestinians. So it is unfair competition. Uh, yes, uh, for dates, uh, there are specific standards that have to be met. Uh, but we work also with farmers on capacity building. So we train them on the best agricultural practices that they have to follow in order to produce a high quality Palestinian dates. And so far, they've been doing a very good job. Sometimes we face problems with some farmers, but we always work on solving these problems. Uh, and uh, we've been successful in exporting dates since 10 years to different countries, to the EU, mainly 
uh, like Belgium, Italy, France, uh, uh, Germany, and to some other non-European countries like Canada, New Zealand, and also Emirates.